Hello everyone. Good evening. Thanks Almighty God for everything. I am Jalal, founder and director of Visa Society, and I'm the host on uh, tonight's program. I would like to express my deepest honor to all our guests and participants at tonight's program. Okay. Uh, we have three facilitators for the training. And today, Hazar Akhtar will uh, coordinate the program. Uh, Hazar Akhtar, Imdadul Haq, and Umme Hafsa Nishu. They are all students from Bangladesh, and they are the Secretary of English Corner and uh, Academy Affairs International Section. Now, I request uh, Hazar Akhtar to introduce herself. Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. This is Hajar Akhtar. Currently, I'm pursuing MBA in Human Resource Management from Jahanginagar University, Bangladesh. Along with this, I'm also working as Secretary of English Corner and Academic Affairs of Research Society. Thank okay. you. Uh, MDM Dadul Haq, please, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, this is MD Imdadul Haq and I am a Bangladeshi citizen. Currently, I am pursuing a BSc in Geology and Mining at the University of Borishal, Bangladesh. I am working with Research Society as a Research Assistant and Secretary of English Corner at the Research Society. And now, I am also a facilitator of this session. Hope we are all together can learn more from this training session. Thank you, Research Society. Thank you all. Okay, thank you, Imda. Uh, now, uh, Umme Hafsanishu, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. This is Umme Hafsanishu uh, from Maulana Fashani Science and Technology University, Department of Biotechnology and Genetic Engineering. Uh, I am also a, uh, uh, as a um, work as a secretary, International Academic Affair um, in Research Society. Best wishes to the participants and hope we will run a successful session for all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Special thanks to our honorable guest and all members of the society and participants. Now, Hazir Akhtar, the floor is yours. Please continue the program. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hope all of you can hear me. I strongly believe in success is your visualization and imitation is your imagination. From the very beginning of our life, we dream for bright success. But how many of you or of us are eager to excel ourselves in computer programming and scientific research? It's exactly what we are going to know from this session. It's my immense pleasure to start this session with the permission from our honorable guest. So a very good evening to one and all present here. I heartily welcome all the, all the dignitaries present here. I want to take the opportunity to welcome our uh, distinguished guest. First of all, Professor Dr. Golam Dostagi, sir, from Toronto, Canada. Professor Dr. Abdul Sattasar from Portugal Science and Technology University, Bangladesh. Professor Dr. Devendu Vishwasar from Portugal Science and Technology University, Bangladesh. We are greatly uh, pleased to have you with us in today's session. We are also honored to welcome our resource person of Python training, Muhammad Jalaluddin sir, with us and now it's time to have some words from our honorable guest. First of all, to know why Python training is important and how we can develop our career in Canada. To know this, I would like to request Professor Golam Dostikir, sir, to have some words from us for us. Sir, please. Okay, so distinguished guests, organizers, presenters, facilitators, and participants, good evening, good afternoon, uh, yes, sir, good, good morning, evening. whatever applies to you. I feel honored to have been invited by Muhammad Jalaluddin, the founder and director 
of Lisa Society. Thank you so much for inviting me to this training program on Python, programming, data analysis, and visualization, and for giving me an opportunity to welcome you and to share a few words with you. Mama Jalaluddin is a prolific researcher with national and international publications across the world. With his dynamic leadership, he has managed to reach out to a large number of enthusiastic and serious people interested in scientific research. The presence of today's large number of participants reflects what he has been working for over the last few years. Congratulations, Jalal, and thank you, the, and thank you, the participants, for your overwhelming response and enthusiastic approach to learning, which is a lifelong process without any restrictions to age, ethnicity, or nationality. I welcome you all. Let me share with you my interest and my experience in ID. In 1998, I returned to Bangladesh from England after the completion of my PhD in philosophy on a Commonwealth scholarship. At that point, IT was booming. People were crazy to learn ID. Dhaka city was clouded in the broad delight with the shadows of posters, banners, flyers of computer training centers. I was so serious and so curious about ID that I myself enrolled for computer courses and I learned C programming, C++ programming, HTML, CSS, Oracle database, SQL on NT platform. Python did not exist at that time. By Python, we knew Giant Anaconda and that was through different movies or documentaries. Believe it or not, I wrote a book on Linux networking. I still have that book with me right now. Just a few pages were short from publication and then 9-11 occurred. Devastating the whole world, particularly the IT sector. My dream to become an IT professional shattered and I took a U-turn in my academic research in philosophy. But IT is such a sector that is universal and portable all over the world. Wherever you go, you go with this transferable skill. And that's exactly what happened to me. In 2008, I came to Canada as an immigrant. And my first job was in, Canada, uh, was in IT in Canada. My job was to inspect and repair memory cards, you know, memory chips under microscopes. Incredible, right? A philosophy doctorate and professor and chair turned to be an IT inspector in Canada, right? Yes, that's me, I did it. I wonder, what would have happened to me during those survival days in Canada had I not earned those skills in ID? Canada, like any other developed nations, needs skilled professionals in the IT sector, particularly graphics design, web-based programming languages, cyber security, and automation programming. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, when most of the businesses are operating from home with corporations depending on e-commerce and online platforms. The Canadian government plans to bring 1.2 million immigrants to Canada over the next three years with over 400,000 skilled immigrants every year. Web development with Python language is one of the most demanding sectors in Canada. You don't have to be a computer savvy to get a job in Canada, but those who are getting training today, I must remind you, 
that without accreditation and IT professional certification, it is very hard to demonstrate your knowledge here. All credentials received outside Canada are assessed by Canadian accreditation organizations legitimated by immigration and citizenship authorities to provide assessment reports for immigration purposes here in Canada. Put simply, your foreign education is compared to Canadian education before you get a job in Canada. I would hope that participants of this training program would engage in serious training that can lead to professional certification in ID. Because quality, not quantity, is what matters in enhancing employability in any IT sector in Canada. To my understanding, Python is a cutting edge technology. And I would believe that this hands-on training will provide you with rewarding skills, even though you are not pursuing a career in computer programming or software engineering. To conclude, I'd like to thank Yaraluddin once again for organizing such a timely hands-on training program for participants across the world. Thank you, the facilitators, presenters, moderators, participants, for your shared responsibility and commitment. Welcome to the training program on Python, on Python and I wish you all the success. Now, if you have any question regarding Canadian immigration or possibility in employability here in Canada, please go ahead. Thank you. We are very much pleased to have your enlightening speech. Hope your speech will be an inspiration for all of us. I will request from the audience or participants, if you have any query, then you can ask or there will be a session for question and answer. That time you can leave your query. Uh, today's, uh, I think it's not a national, but an international issue that there are all uh, the, so many students or maximum students are indifferent to computer programming and scientific research. They feel much more comfortable staying apart from computer programming and scientific research. Now, I would like to uh, give this floor to uh, Professor Dr. Abdul Sattasar to uh, say some words for us. And uh, my query to you is, why should we learn computer programming and how is uh, can de develop our career and why is necessary for scientific research? Uh, thank you very much, Hajar Akhtar. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm hearing. So, okay. So I do believe you are the potential future leader of data scientist or software programmer yes, who can make the data more precise and valuable for any business by using Python programming language. So this is uh, Dr. Bamad Abdul Sattar. Actually, I am an associate professor in disaster risk management of Potuwa Khali Science and Technology University. Currently, I am in Australia for research purpose. So uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you for this program. It is actually, I would like to express my sincere uh, gratitude and a special thanks to uh, Dr. Jalaluddin and also Professor Dr. Kalam uh, Nustakir sir. He's uh, here to uh, make the program very successful and very delighted. And I would like to welcome all of you to this program. So actually I would like to say something about the research society, about the program. In, I would like to share my experience from my life. The, I think you are luckier than me because you got this opportunity to learn 
It's such a kind of uh, programming language with free of cost with uh, online. Because I did not have such kind of opportunity. I obtained my bachelor degree in agricultural sciences from Bangladesh. Then I got scholarship from Netherlands to study masters of science, environmental sciences. During my master's program, even I did not use different, any program actually. No program, no GIS, no modeling. But luckily, I got opportunities to work on environmental system analysis group where I did modeling stuff. I never heard the modeling. I used to know the modeling, what is modeling? Like fashion modeling, different model. I thought like this, but in research, there's a model. And anything, not only research, in every life, we have to use the model. Like then, the model I used, the global uh, news model, this model also used the Python program. I never heard. Then uh, we need to write the script. The, the script, that's the paper, that's the language. But if you can imagine the computer, how does it work? There is a language, different language. And the Python is a very strong and popular language nowadays. We can say this is boom boom in the world. And one company estimated in the, by 2022, more than 58 million jobs, new jobs will be all open based on the programming like artificial intelligence the, and machine learning program. This machine learning also, the uh, Python plays a key role there. Python is everywhere. And why? And, and now, and one uh, company, they did research on which programming language is very popular. And they found the Python is the second highest popular program next to Java. Do you know Java? Java is another program. And why this popularity? Because of its easy to use and also simplicity. So what we need to know, just the, I, I'm saying to the students or learner, and Golam Dostoki said, said, there's no age limit to learn. We are still learning. Even everybody is learning till that. And then if you use the, uh, the Python program, that said, based on the Python, they have, uh, this is very simple and very easy to use. And what you need, just one attitude, that we can, but I can do it. This is very important. If you think, oh, this program, this is, uh, we need to write a script, long script. Even e when I see my script during my PhD, I used the GRID, grid analysis and display system. I need to write the script for cyclone modeling. When I see the script, this is sometimes a two page, three page, big long list. There's a different script. But this is now, it's old version, but it's still, some uh, environmental scientists, climate scientists are using this program. But Python is very popular, I mentioned before, the second highest. Machine learning, artificial intelligence, there's a lot of jobs opportunities in Australia as well. If we lost him. Maybe his internet problem. Hello, Rector, you can continue. We lost his connection. Yeah. Because the Australian people don't like uh, lockdown. So they, don't, they want to go out. So that was a huge demonstration yesterday in Australia, in Melbourne particularly you know, against lockdown. Yeah, that's true. 
Melbourne or Sydney? Where do you live? Sydney. I've Sydney. been stay at home for almost two months, two to three months already. Right. <laughs> yeah, I have been. <laughs> I have been to Sydney a couple of times for conference, and uh, also I have been to uh, Melbourne. Uh, that yeah. was back in 2008. Yeah, 2008, uh, end of December. Yeah, December, this time, November, December. You know, there was a conference, a big conference. I was there in Melbourne that time. Yeah. Do you like it? Oh, I do. I like uh, Melbourne better than Sydney. Sydney is very congested and very crowded. Very, very crowded. <laughs> uh, Sydney yeah, is like, more busy. Busy. Yeah. yeah. Very busy, very busy. Particularly, I don't like your parking system. You know, it's very hard to park in the city. Very, very hard. <laughs> there is no parking spot on the streets. So wherever you go, you know, you know, police chase you. Hey, don't park, don't park. Wherever you go, police chase you, chase you, chase you, chase you. So where can you park? No parking space. So that was the problem that I faced when I was in Sydney. That's true. Yeah, it's very yeah. strict. Like mm. it's very nice. Sydney, Sydney, Sydney is one of the most livable places in the whole world now. Okay, Sydney is one of the most. Sydney, Melbourne, Toronto, Calgary, um, and uh, Vienna. Uh, these cities are top ten cities. You know, for most livable yeah. cities in the world. So Sydney is very nice, very clean, and the. Um, Best thing that I liked in Sydney is, um, I mean, in, across Canada, across Australia, is it is smoke free. It is smoke free. No one can smoke anywhere in public places, be home <laughs> or ever. yeah. That is the best yeah. thing that I liked, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Some people very, they do, but yeah, but it's not a lot. But it's very people. rare. Very rare. Very rare. It, it is like a, because they have a restriction on that, so you cannot do anywhere. Oh, that's very good. I love it. I love it. Here in Canada, we don't have that much restriction. Here, people are so much free. Even they have legalized marijuana. So now marijuana is legalized in Canada. Uh, sir is they have legalized. Uh, okay, we, we is back. Back okay. Uh, I'm very sorry because <laughs> the power of. I mean, after switch off. Sorry, I did not put a charge on. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, thank you very much. Welcome again. So I, I was talking about the application of uh, Python and the attitude what we need. That we can, I can do it. I can do it attitude is very important. So I did not know anything about modeling, about programming, about uh, Arc GIS program, anything. So nowadays, the Python is considered as a tool for research, tool. We need to learn. GIS is the tool for research. And the application of Python is versatile. It can be used anywhere, including scientific research, in, in the arts, business, science, anywhere, any, any field, it can be applied. And the job opportunities I mentioned before, in Australia is boom boom as well, in the world. So even in Australia for immigration purpose, there is a sector like GTI, Global Distinguished Talent Independent Program. They have also some uh, prioritized sector, seven to eight. So, so IT or programming or data scientist is there. So if you have such kind of experience, but I would like to highlight some points about our Asian people, especially for uh, Bangladesh, you can consider, oh, I am uh, doing a bachelor in English or arts subjects or different stuff. So can I work as a, a software developer or a programmer or a data analyst? Because oh, I am arts background, I don't have this, but still in developed world, you can do it. If you have experience, 
just uh, Golam Dostoyevsky sir mentioned the accreditation. If you have, if you can hear, if you can prove yourself, you have the experience of qualification. There's are such kind of qualification assessment institute. They can assess your qualification. If you can prove yourself, you can work as a software engineer or software developer. Although your background is different, even you study in Bengali, no problem. But I can give you one example from uh, Sydney. One of uh, my friend's wife, I think my friend of senior brother from my uni from Bangladesh, his wife uh, did a bachelor in economics from Dhaka University in Bangladesh. But when she came to Australia, she decided to do uh, different things. She just started a, a bachelor degree in dental surgery. So now she is a, a registered uh, doctor, a dentist. She, she works as a dentist. After completion of her uh, bachelor, master's in economics from Bangladesh. So, so just imagine it. If you think that you can do it, I think you can do it. Just like me, then, then I then I use the GIS in my master's thesis. I use uh, the model. I run the model even just one day. Uh, one PhD student showed us how to use the model, how to run the model. And after a few days, I learned everything from YouTube, from Google. I think YouTube is the best friend. Google is the best friend. But nowadays, many blogs, you can find many blogs, many channels free because you can learn everything. If you search how to use Python program, you can find it out. Even workshop, video, everything in online. But now it is very popular. Then my professor, whenever any students, even PhD, masters came to her, she said, okay, contact Abdus. He can help you how to run this model, how to use GIS, this stuff. So then when I started my PhD in Australia in 2015, my professor asked me, you need to learn the grid analysis and display system. And you have to use the storm source model. I did not use anything before. Grid analysis display system, no. Storm source model, no, nothing. Then I said, okay. Because I have the attitude, I can do it. Then I started to learn different tutorial, YouTube. Then I learned how to use. So I successfully applied the grads and I ran the storm trust model. And another thing, you have to be imaginary. Don't close your boundary. You have to be out of your box. Just think. Sometimes I can give you one example in this case. Sometimes, you know, we are certain joking. Oh, it can be this. Even it may be real in life in future. I can mention, I would like to mention one example here. One uh, distant, but I don't like to mention his name. He's an assistant professor in uh, US. When uh, he, he was doing a PhD, because uh, he had a problem with one hand, he cannot type long time because uh, he was doing PhD on computational uh, genomics, this stuff. So uh, one day uh, his professor asked, can you do with your voice? Because you have the pain in your hand, you cannot sit a long time and type these things. One hand, this takes a long time. Then he just uh, takes his message, uh, keep his message in his uh, head. And after his PhD, three years back, when he was doing PhD, the postdoc, oh, he said, okay, I found interested. 
then he uh, developed a program uh, how to use the voice. No need to write, just use the voice to write the things. So then there's a, from imagination, from joking, and his, he can do it attitude, I can do it attitude, it becomes true. So that means, like me, I was thinking, I was just thinking, okay, I, I was discussing with my PhD supervisor, so how can we estimate at home, when one cyclone is formed, can we estimate the impact from uh, before, the, we, how many buildings may be destroyed, how many people may be affected, and what uh, things need, uh, we need to supply, I, I mean, in terms of uh, relief, how many water will be needed, can we uh, do before? I said, uh, yes, you can, but it takes time, we need another PhD. No, I just uh, searching these things, and just uh, three months before, I was in an uh, international conference at University of New South Wales in Sydney. I was just sharing my spare thinking with one scientist from Geoscience Australia. Oh, he said, oh, yes, it is very interesting. You can do it because we develop a program for Indonesia. He says, NSF program. You can apply this for your thesis. Just three months before my thesis submission, then I, can, I said, how can I use this? So he said, you need this data only, then programming this stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I just, within one or two weeks, I learned it and I applied it and my professor was very happy. Oh, it's very good. Although this was not uh, calibrated properly, it was just one month. I just, this is an estimation, we can use it. So if you think you can do it, and I, strongly believe you, you you will be able to do it and you can open your future career in the world not only things your own country you can get your job anywhere in the world but some some of us we think only one dimension so we are studying this area so i need to find job this area no you can find job anywhere if based on your skills and your experience and python i think it will help a great in your future career development as well as research. And Python for data, and you can analyze your data. You can, because most of the model use uh, this Python programming. And you use the Python, if you have the experience, you can learn, you can write a script. Because when you learn the model, you need to write a script. And this script based on, most of them are uh, Python based. So I hope if you learn this program properly and in your future career, it will help a lot. Even to find a scholarship in Australia or any other country, it will help a lot. And this application, if you uh, find, I, I just mentioned before, million of jobs, new jobs are opening based on machine learning, artificial intelligence, in the near future, because you know that we are living in the digital world, so we need to learn the program. Because just imagine one thing, just one program, if you uh, calculate this thing, that like if you, everyone know the Excel program, just single command, we can calculate many things. But Python and machine learning, this program very strong, very, very strong, stronger than Excel. Excel is a very simple program. But this program can calculate very, very big calculation within a second. So I strongly suggest to you, the participants who are uh, participating in this uh, program to learn the program. This is a very good opportunity to learn and it will shape your future research career as well as your job. You can find a job, you can, it will help to accomplish your research, your master's thesis, PhD thesis, even postdoc and even job. And 
this is a great opportunity for all of you. And I think his I took too long. So just one thing I would suggest, I mentioned before, because I, I am highlighting these things because it's very important. Just I can do it. From this uh, program, I just uh, convey my message to you, all of you, this I can do it, this attitude. Don't be frustrated. Just work and I can do it attitude. I hope you will be successful in your life. Finally, I would like to thank all of you, especially uh, the Research Society to invite me to talk something about this. And I hope and to success for the program. And I hope uh, you will all be fine the next research and see you in the next time. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I greatly appreciate your enlightening words. I hope this full of inspiration and encouragement for all of us. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. To my knowledge, there are some other languages like C++, Java, JavaScript, SQL, PHP, and so many. So why we should learn Python programming and why is much more flexible for a beginner and how it can develop our career in scientific research field. To know this, I would like to request Professor Dr. Devendu Bissar, sir, to take this floor. Sir, please. I think he's not there. Maybe he's some personal issue. Okay. So, so now I'd like to request Muhammad Jalaluddin, sir, to tell something about about our research society and schedule of Python training. Uh, thank you so much, Hazar Akhtar. Uh, I'm yes. very grateful to Professor Dr. Gulam Dostukirsan and Dr. Abdul Sattar, sir. They are my academic teacher. They are my uh, I can say master. And I'm always learning from them. Uh, thank you so much for all. Okay, let me start with my real story. When I came to China in 2017, I found difficulties in computer programming, data analysis, scientific paper writing. Actually, I didn't know anything except for the Microsoft Excel. You know, in, in Bangladesh, we, most of us know Excel. But what Abdul Sattasar said, Excel is very simple software. It's nothing. When I talk to professor, professor, do you know this, this software? So no, I only know the Microsoft Excel. In Chinese, word, that means very bad. So I was very ashamed in that day. Even I didn't know, I didn't have about like the name of MATLAB, NCL, Python. I just heard one name, what Dr. Abdul Sattar sir said, Grash. When he came to Bangladesh and during his PhD, I was a research assistant of his research projects. Then he said, Jala, do you know the software? I was no. I just had the name of the grass, but I didn't know anything. Like, I was in the ocean. I was nothing. All right? Uh, there was, therefore, I had to learn C, Proton, Python, NCL, MATLAB, etc., etc., etc. What Dr. Abdul Sattar Sarn and Dr. Prof. Gulam Dasisar say, I can do it, right? I can do it. Then I always in the lab from morning to till like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. Even I didn't uh, come back to the, the dorm. I was in the lab, 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 and learned this thing. All right? But it was very difficult. You know, in reality, uh, the training is not often free and not available for all. Yes, you can find some tutorial some video on YouTube, in Google, and there are some platform like Machine Learning Mastery, Stack, Abuse, uh, Quora, Medium, Kaggle, then a lot of platforms, right? But the problem is, uh, I think Dr. Abdul Satasan and Dr. Gulam Dusar will agree with me, most of researchers don't want to share the secrets. Yeah, you will find the basics, the code. 
Very basic course, how to do that, how to run the model. But there's a secret. You know, in the modeling, there is a parameterization, how to do that. You'll find some basic course, but apply in your data. Like you will find a basic course on business management, but I'm working with Cyclone. Cyclone, this is a dynamic process, right? When you use your own data, you'll find the difficulties. So that's why I feel the necessity for a platform to share knowledge on scientific data analysis, scientific research, programming, English language, because we also have the problem with us paper writing, like speaking and just writing are different from the paper writing. Paper should be in the academic format and should use the different the technical writing. And our motto, nothing to hide. And most of us don't want to share the secrets, don't want to share the knowledge. That is the problem. Finally, we established the Research Society on 17 April, 2019. Okay, now let's talk about the training program. Our training will start on 22nd of September, 2020, 2021, on next Wednesday. And we'll have three classes per week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the time is 7.30 p.m. Bangladesh time. So you need to adjust your time zone, right? And I will provide the meeting links and, and the update schedule through an email. And in this program, I will use the Anaconda. What Dr. Abdul Sattar said, uh, Dr. Gulam Yusuf said, he was uh, being like Anaconda. <laughs> yeah, the Anaconda, okay, right? Anaconda is powerful. I will use the Anaconda. So you need to know how to install Anaconda, but for your easiness, I have already made a video tutorial and uploaded on my YouTube channel. Okay, why you need to use the Anaconda? You can also use the Python. You can also use the Python. You can also use the Spider, right? But why Anaconda? Right, this is the question, why? Right, Anaconda made our life easy. Do you know why? In Anaconda, you will find the Jupyter Notebook. You will find the Spider. If you're working on machine learning, you will find the scikit-learn uh, libraries for the machine learning. If you work on the deep learning, there is a TensorFlow. Thousands of libraries there. If you want to handle your data, like you have a data file in Excel, you have data file in text file, Excel for Excel for different formats, right? Then there is a Pandas library you can handle. You can handle, like the baby, Python made like a baby. You can do everything, it's there, just you need to know how to do that, right? Then there is also the NumPy. If you are, if you're familiar with the programming language, the most, the first one is the error management. In data analysis, error management is difficult. How to manage the error? In programming, three things, if you know you are master. Error management, uh, you know the looping, for and et cetera, and the conditional statement. It's three things, know that you are master. So there is a NumPy. So you don't need to import these libraries one by one. Anaconda has these libraries. So you just install the Anaconda and we'll find everything there. All right? Now, our facilitators, facilitators, Hajar Akhtar and Umme have some issue. We'll provide you RNS link during the training program. And MDL he will provide the code and data before the training through an email, right? Okay. So, uh, oh, this is all about the training program. And finally, the certificate of training will only be awarded for those who will have more than 85% attendance. So that's, about, uh, that's, that's all about the training program. If you have any question regarding training program, schedule, et cetera, et cetera, you can ask now. The floor is yours. Ayeda, uh, can I take uh, 10 seconds from you? 
Yes, sir. Okay, I'm talking to you all participants. Why don't you turn your camera on? Okay, <laughs> so if you don't turn your camera on, we don't see your expressions and we can't yes. communicate or in interact with you. So turn your camera on, come on, come on. So let's see each other. Seeing good is feeling good. Feeling good is learning good. That's it. That's yes, the spirit. That's what I want. Exactly. Very good. Let's see each other. So if I see your expressions, then we can understand whether you can follow us or not, right? So let's do it. Unless you have any religious background or religious restriction, you can turn on your camera not to see each other. Okay? okay. That's it. Thank you so much. Okay, go ahead now. 10 seconds gone. We are very much thankful for your valuable uh, words. And now the floor is open for the participants. And I will highly appreciate if anyone from you guys share your expectations or ask whatever you want to know relevant to this course. Hazir uh, Akhtar, before you go to the participant, Dr. Devundu Vishesar is present now. So you may give. Okay, so we are uh, happy to have you, sir. I want to take the opportunity to welcome our honorable guest, Dr. Devendu Vista, sir. Please, sir, can you hear me? Okay, I'll uh, hear everybody. Uh, actually, I'm sorry uh, because my electricity problem is here uh, from at least one hour uh, last time. So that's why uh, you cannot join in the due time uh, uh, with this uh, program. So actually, I'm hearing uh, the uh, Dalal's uh, speech. Uh, no worries, sir. Can you hear me? Sir. Uh... Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Audible? Yes, sir. Now I can hear you. Okay. Yes, okay. Thank you. Actually, maybe last time uh, my electricity is problem in this area, so uh, all of my internet as well as electricity is not available in this time. So I'm uh, sorry for being that. And, uh, Hazara Akhtar has the internet problem. Okay. Hazara, maybe he, she has the internet problem. Okay, sir, uh, could you uh, speak about the importance of learning computer programming or why do you need yeah. to learn the computer programming in scientific research? Uh, okay. Sir, okay. I... okay, sir, please continue. Yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I, uh, I will engage with this uh, research related uh, at least uh, two years uh, with Dallas. And actually, it is an interesting platform for everybody to learning um, the anything, especially in the research methodology, analysis tools, as well other things. Because Dalal is very expert with this uh, in this field, especially in the uh, statistical analysis uh, as another uh, defined computer programming. Actually, it is important. Nowadays, uh, I believe that the, uh, everybody should know the computer programming, especially in the any kind of research, especially as, uh, as I'm the biologist. So uh, it is different thing is, uh, as the Dalal is another uh, field because he is the uh, climatic change or other things uh, he did his research. So uh, in my field, uh, actually the computer program is very important for any kind of research, especially in my field like uh, uh, bioinformatics or other research, uh, other uh, research, uh, other research uh, in this field. So uh, yeah, without this computer programming, this data is not managed uh, uh, fruitfully. So I think uh, uh, this program, this is really in the Python program, though I am not uh, uh, my expert in this Python program because my biological research, I, I need some another uh, program I, I, I use. So I think this program, as well as the computer program, especially into the Python uh, needs for statistical analysis, I think uh, he will uh, very uh, fruitfully deliver to these lectures. And I will be participant in this year, uh, home and abroad, especially in the Bangladesh and another country. I will, they will enjoy very uh, uh, fruitfully this room. Thank you. Uh, this uh, occasions as well as I'm very thankful to uh, Jalal as well as the other members in this program. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your insightful words. And sorry for my interruption. My network was buffering. 
and now i want to give this floor to the our enthusiastic participants uh, if you have any query or you want to share your expectations regarding our python programming training then you can share with us and i will highly appreciate if any one of you can share with me okay now we are already at the ending session of our programming and i highly speak of your participation this has made our event session successful and vibrant now i want to hand over the whole process to the uh, to our resource person mohammad jalaluddin sir okay thank sir. you hazar akhtar python is a yes, language what i said before in scientific research data analysis any sector if you are from the arts and uh, like what <laughs> professor dr golan dosi sir said he was in philosophy but he learned python he learned like the programming and he got the job in canada what dr abdul satar sir said uh, he was not from the computer programming but the computer science but he learned model finally he is in australia he did phd in uh, he did masters in europe he did phd in australia and doing lot of works now okay so uh, in bangladesh most of us have the misconception do you know the what the misconception even i had it what the misconception most of the students go for the bcs okay i will not talk that part but if you want to go for the bcs you are in this academic position or academic life most of us believe that only the computer uh, computer science background student learn the computer yes sir exactly and we just need to learn the excel if you have the excel is enough and we only know and most of us know survey research is very easy is very basic that's it but yes, this is the very wrong way whatever any fields if you want to do scientific research you need to know the program you need to know the code right so uh, all of our uh, distinguished guests pointed out that it is essential mm -hmm. to learn computer programming for scientific research and career right how about well, most of a most of has sir yes please yeah can i take a few minutes from you jalal yes so sure. i guess i would like to highlight the importance of learning computer technology because like you said like uh, uh, professor salam and uh, professor devendra said that there is no alternative to learning computer technology computer you know skill uh, you know in any field you know whether you are in uh, science or you know geography or history or humanities like me so i'm not from the science background i did my phd in philosophy uh, pure philosophy you know you know uh, in in england but then you know that was back in 1992 when i went to uh, england to do my uh, phd in 1997 i finished my phd so when i came back that time you know there was a huge demand i mean people were crazy to learn computer technology because you know jobs were there you know in particular usa so everybody will go to usa usa america 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 money flies dollar flies in uh, you know in the sky so you know go go catch it you know so what do you have to do you have to learn computer and i started learning computer you know having a phd in philosophy when i come out of the scholarship <laughs> i applied for commonwealth scholarship two times in my life and i got it once in canada i got it my job was a uh, uh, scholarship was awarded and uh, you know i uh, um this was processed but the university did not grant me jangnor university did not grant me a study lab uh, but before i joined jangnor university as a lecturer i uh, got this uh, scholarship um but they didn't grant me uh, uh my study lab to go abroad to to pursue my higher studies in canada and it was a common of the scholarship because i did not do any politics and i do, i was not involved in any political 
a group or party. That was my principle, my ideology, that I will never do politics. My friend, you know, is Vice Chancellor of Dhaka University now, was Raktu Jawan. We are our classmates, best mates. We studied together at Dhaka University. I never stood second in my life. From grade one to grade one, I always got first class. Even at university, I got first class first in both masters and honors terms. So, um, but that was absolutely in philosophy. And then I, I went to uh, UK. When I came back from UK, then, you know, people were crazy about computers. So I started learning. I said, people said, oh, you are PhD, sir, sir. Even the tenors, they, they were much to a sir. You know, computer is not for you. You don't have to. I said, no, 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 I can do it. I can do it. So then I started learning and I started see, uh, learning C++. Uh, and then uh, Linux, Oracle database, CSS. So and I started uh, you know, learning the programming language. And believe it or not, I beat a professional computer, um, computer science engineer. I don't want to uh, give the name because it's been recorded, but I bet it. This is me, Gulam, a professor teacher in philosophy. But that, you know, I, I, like I said, you know, when uh, 9-11 occurred, then everything changed. The whole world was upset and it was upside down like that. So then I took a U-turn to come back to my original research in humanities and philosophy. But when I came back here uh, in uh, Canada back in 2008, in the early uh, days in 2008, you know, there was recession in Canada, all over the world, recession was going on. In Canada, heavily it was hit and uh, by recession. And then my first job, you know, so I was trying to get a university position, but then I said, okay, so a lot of people are working as cab drivers, taxi drivers, working in restaurants, team hotels, uh, McDonald's uh, for survival. So I said, I don't want to do that. You know, I just want to go back from where I came from. I just want to go back. So back, let's go back. That was my principle. Back, go back, where I came from. Because I was professor. I became professor in 2002. I became chairman in 2003. So now it is 2021. Had I been in Bangladesh, I would have been one of the senior professors right now. And uh, so I wanted to go back. But then someone said, hey, do you know computer? I said, yes, I do. I have some knowledge. So why don't I apply? Then I applied and I got a job in IBM. And, um, and also that was, you know, microchip inspector. So that position was honorable position. But think about this. Had I not received those skills in computer technology, what would have happened to me? What could I have done right, to survive? Rome was not built in a day. It takes time to survive. So this, what I'm saying is that computer is not just for computer technologists or technicians or engineers. Computer is the cutting edge technology. The technology is for everyone, regardless of your academic background or interest. It will help you today or tomorrow. You don't have to be a computer savvy, but it will help you to survive and to assist your research or academic career. It will help you definitely. That's what I wanted to say. If you have any question regarding, you know, if, I mean, those who are studying in Bangladesh or somewhere in Africa, if you have any question to immigrate to Canada or Australia, because we have a professor from Australia, Dr. Salam is here. Um, so he knows the immigration procedure and I'm here. So if you have any specific question for us, you can go ahead. We'll try to answer your questions or queries if you, if you have any, okay? But uh, time is now. You are fortunate that you are doing this training when you are in university, when you are in early stage of your career. I did it, like I said, when I was a professor with PhD, I started learning computer but you are students of undergraduate or graduate programs, and you are learning Python. You are fortunate enough. Thank you so much, please. Uh, thank you so much. 
If you have any question, okay, before I talk, if you have any question, you can ask. Today, you are not asking any question. What happens to you? <laughs> huh? What happens to you? That day, you asked me a lot of questions. Today, you are so silent. Why? Uh, we, you, we, we are just you are hungry. We are I just speechless uh, hearing your motivations. So, uh, okay. let me introduce think... Dr. Uh, Abdurrahim. He is my teacher. Dr. Abdurrahim is my teacher. Uh, uh, oh, yes. And he's a colleague of Dr. Abdul Sattar, sir. Okay, please continue, sir. No, no, I, I just uh, say from uh, audience side that we are really speechless hearing uh, Dr. Golam Dastagi sir and uh, Abdul Sattar. He is my big brother. We are from the same uh, corner of the country. And so uh, we will uh, discuss or we will have some questions during the sessions. But from today, today's motivations, uh, I want to just uh, add some for the learners. I mean, for uh, I am here an assistant professor at Potuakali Science and Technology University. So uh, I, I um, I joined the last session, um, uh, last sessions of GIS and remote sensing training organized by Research Society. And from that interest, I am here also. Uh, I want to just, uh, I am not so technical because uh, maybe some, <laughs> some, uh, uh, some uh, but I have a lot of interest for learnings and only for that I am here. I, I hope uh, from the side of participants, uh, many participants are enthusiastic to learn something new Python, but uh, this is not query. Uh, uh, from the last session, I want to suggest uh, Mr. Jalal, he was my student, first intern student uh, in my um, uh, university level from my university level, Portugal Science and Technology University, and I always feel proud of Mr. Jalal. What he is doing, it's uh, really it's useless. Uh, it's it's uh, an extraordinary activities. So I wish we will learn accurately, and research society will perform the session uh, successfully. Thank you. And greetings, Satarwai. <laughs> thank you all. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for your valuable talk. Yeah, we'll start from the very beginning. Okay. We'll start from the beginning. What I have outlined for the training from the very beginning, like ABC, like that, right? Very beginning. What is the computer programming? How computer understand the language? And the, what is the data? What is the data structure? And what is the data file? And how to import them? How to analyze them? How to customize them? And finally, uh, how to visualize, right? I will show one by one, step by step. So you need to attend every class. But if you miss one class, you will be in trouble, for sure. Because this is a programming language. Computer is a machine, not a human being. So you need to understand the language of the computer. And how computer understands, you need to know that. So, uh, okay, there is another question. Maybe why you need to learn Python regardless of R, there is a lot of languages. I will advise you for the participants, learn one language. Like in my life, I saw many students want to learn R, want to learn Python, want to learn MATLAB, want to learn C, want to learn C++, want to learn ANSYL, et cetera, et cetera. No. Please sit down and learn one language. Every language has the same syntax, the same thing. The basic idea is the same, but Python use this way, R use this way, but idea is the same. So learn one language very well. For me, I learn C, right? And they continue. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, time and continued support, and I think uh, the, our training will eradicate the fear of learning computer programming and coding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now I need permission from the honorable guest to end the program. Yes, please. Yes.
Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here for tonight. And I wish you for a good evening. Thank you very much.